Welcome, my name is Peter Williams and I'm presenting this special interview on behalf of the Catholic Truth Society. In the last week, the Pontifical Council for the Promotion of the New Evangelization has promulgated the new edition of the Directory for Catechesis, which will be published by the Catholic Truth Society. With me to discuss this exciting new development is Dr. Petrock Willey. Dr. Petrock Willey is Professor of Theology and Director of the Catechetics Programme at the University of Steubenville in the United States, also known here for having worked at the Merivale Institute in Birmingham. Dr. Petrock was for more than 20 years editor of The So, which is a journal for catechetical leaders. He also hosted the EWTN catechetical series, Handing on the Faith. And he also studied theology at King's College London, my alma mater as well, a very good place, and philosophy at Liverpool University, where he'd received his doctorate. Most relevant for our purposes today is the fact that Dr. Willie is a consultant for the Pontifical Council for the promotion of the new evangelization in Rome and was involved in this project of the directory for catechesis. So, Dr. Willie, for the first question that I have for you, what is the directory for catechesis and why does it matter for us today? Yeah, so think of it in relation to the content of the faith. Um, the content of the faith, the church often calls the, the deposit of faith. It's, if you like, the precious jewel, the treasure and so on, which we all receive, which is the saving truths, which we, we believe in and we follow. And we learn to love the Lord. Mm. And that's not just to be held by ourselves. It's precisely to be handed on to others. So it's to be transmitted to be uh, in various ways in the church passed on so that others can receive it. So catechesis is a word which from very early in the church was given to the whole name of what Jesus called making disciples of all the nations. You remember at the end of uh, Matthew 28, the final command of the Lord is go make disciples of all the nations. Mm -hmm. And that really, so then the word catechesis was used for that. So a directory for catechesis is not concerned with the content of the faith. It's concerned with how do we effectively transmit it to others. And again, that word catechesis is just such an interesting and beautiful word. And it contains uh, so much of what the church always wants to say, because literally it means to echo down to others. And that gives you a clue to why the church can't simply say, go out and teach the faith very simply and treat it as any other ordinary subject. This whole idea of an echo is important because an echo doesn't have the source of its own sound within itself. So when you're echoing something, it's precisely your faithfulness to the source, which is outside of yourself which you're trying to transmit authentically and faithfully. And so that involves the church, first of all, as the church is the, the ecclesial uh, actor in the work of catechesis. And those of us who are catechists or those of us who are priests or parents participate in the church's act of transmission. And um, we receive, if you like, our commission, our ability to do so from the church. And that work demands for all of us as well that kind of closeness to the source, that willingness to listen, to be close to Christ, to make sure that the saving truths we hand on are not external to ourselves. We're precisely to be able to be in our lives, an echo of that. So that's really what the directory is, is about. And you can see that it falls within the church's life. It's a very interesting discipline. It's something like a work of spirituality because it's very much concerned with, as a parent, if I want to echo Christ to my children, how do I do that? And that means I need to myself remain close to him. I need to think about faithfulness in my own life to him and so on, so I can be an echo in, in word and life. Um, it also involves all of us thinking about how do other people receive what we've got to say, because we know that we won't learn anything from people we don't like. We find it very, very difficult to, to learn in situations where we find things tedious or where we're bored. So there is something which we need to learn as well about within uh, the interaction between the one echoing and the one receiving. How does that take place? And then you've got the whole question of how the culture is already influencing 
both the one trying to echo and the one receiving, either for good or for ill, either assisting or not? How do we get the church's whole culture to do this well? So that's really why there's a directory for catechesis, because the church is constantly um, seeing this as her main task. Handing on the faith to others is what the church is for, making sure that others can receive Christ's saving love and truth. And so a new directory is her ongoing meditation upon this. Wonderful. Now, what we, of course, know about this new directory is that it's very much concentrated on the connection between evangelization and catechesis. So in terms of handing on the faith, it's about planting that seed of the gospel and then also the, the wider didache, or rather the secondary and, and further teaching of the faith as well. Uh, could you comment about why this new co connection uh, or increased connection, I should say, uh, between evangelization and catechesis has taken place in this new directory? Yeah, sure. That's a great question. Um, I mean, I think one of the interesting things is, as you said at the very beginning, who it is who is responsible for the promulgation of this new directory. For the first time, it's the Pontifical Council for the promotion of the new evangelization. And um, that that's a sign because it used to be under the Congregation for the Clergy. It's a kind of a sign that we do need to see this work of handing on the faith as something completely connected to what the church has always thought of as evangelization. And whereas evangelization in the past or mission um, was perhaps thought of as speaking to those who've never heard the gospel before, you know, we're going to now, you know, go off and be missionaries somewhere. And, uh, Increasingly, what we're realizing is that the culture in which we're situated, wherever that is, really requires people to be like missionaries within it. Just uh, earlier this morning, I was just sitting reading, there's a beautiful translation by Tolkien of Gawain and the Green Knight. And I was just reading that and enjoying it. And I thought, that's 14th century. I mean, we miss so much by not being in a Christian culture because there are just works being penned like that, which constantly are feeding your mind, your heart, feeding your imagination, feeding your desires, with a, with a, you know, a Christian and a Catholic worldview. Now, I know we're going back several hundred years when we had, if you like, the high Middle Ages, when that was happening. But it, it really did mean that the faith was being transmitted culturally in so many rich ways. And the situation we've been in, this slow atrophying of culture, as there's been a gradual apostasy from the faith in the West, has just been so destructive for everybody. And of course, it's left us in a very, very difficult situation now because it's kind of thrown us on our own resources. And one of the challenges for the church is how to articulate her own culture, because there is such a thing as a Christian culture but how to make sure that that culture of the church, which is based on liturgy, essentially, the heart is in liturgy, is going to be handed on so we don't just get stuck in it and, and sort of treat it as a kind of little ghetto group, uh, but nonetheless, we don't just go out and try and be missionaries without being so well resourced ourselves in our own Christian culture that if you like, the going out as missionaries is an evacuation from the centre and there's nothing left. You know, so that, that's really what the new evangelization is about. It's a, really about recognising that atheism, agnosticism, secularism, not in the world outside of us, it's in all of our heads as well. Even if we're trying very, very hard not to make it like that. And so... The church, I mean, knowing Christ's gospel can penetrate every culture and it's what everybody is deeply desiring, um, is saying um, begin that work by the deep and thorough formation of the Christian community itself, making sure that we've heard the gospel, that we know what liturgy is, that we are receiving the graces God wants to give, that we're so well formed and so attractive as a body, as a community, that you really could say, if anybody said, what is it you believe? You could say, come to my local parish and you'll see it. 
I mean, that's what we're longing for. And in a way, you can see that it's both an individual act and a community act for that reason. And so that work of catechesis now, which is always of its own members, is catechesis which has to take into account that the 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 field in which everybody is being sown using a biblical image, as it were, is not is not a necessarily a field which is well adapted to the Christian faith already. Now, a lot of the new directory, therefore, um, and this is you know why would you have a new directory? The last one was ninety seven, um, is focused upon the digital field as one of the kind of phenomena. So this is, as I say, it's not to do with the content of the faith, but, you know, what's that doing to our minds? Um, now, clearly, the digital field um, means that we can, we're speaking across the oceans, you know, there's, there's, makes everybody accessible to one another in a new kind of way. It makes formation in the faith, therefore, um, accessible in some kind of ways. We've just had lots of liturgies online. But we know at the same time that we weren't really given the Mass, you know, because the Mass is sacramental and the Mass is to do with uh, the physical as well and the material. And so one of the, one of the really important parts of the new directory is making sure that we understand and I think encouraging us to study more the phenomenon of the digital, digital virtual world. And we know there's a lot of research that shows that the number of hours you spend on social media is, is, has a correlation to increased anxiety and depression, for example. You know, we know that is true. And why is that? Well, maybe because only two of the senses can, can work. We can see each other at the moment and we can hear each other, but there's no touch. There's no taste, there's no smell. So you're living in a world of sensory deprivation. That's one of the things. And obviously God's being, the, the being of the whole of creation, which we're meant to live and rejoice, is not available insofar as we are in a virtual world. Even though it tries to be more and more, it obviously can't be. And so when the, the uh, directory reflects upon this, it really wants us to see uh, the church being able to use the formation capacity, but in order to get people offline, back into the real world. That's mm -hmm. the purpose. That is the purpose, because the other thing that the digital world does is it it detaches you from the local, It because suddenly the world is your, wherever you are in the world is your world. <laughs> But of course, that's not the world you actually live in. The actual world you live in is your family, and your close friends, and um, they can not only be neglected by this interest in virtual reality, but there can be um, a lack of realism about whether conversion is really taking place in your own life through this. Um, so... That, that's that's one area, and I think that's an area we'll probably see um, more and more coming out from the church on on the, the digital field. But as I say, if you just think about the end goal of catechesis, making a disciple, it means that the word of Christ has to penetrate the whole of your life, the, your environment, your, your local culture, mm -hmm. the real ways in which you speak and act and towards the real people in your lives. So... That somehow, somehow the digital culture must be focused upon feeding and nurturing that and making it fruitful. Mm -hmm. um, so that that's one of the uh, things. Um, a new directory doesn't. I mean, you know what it's like. The church is always in continuity, and we've had two other amazing directories as well. This will be a third wonderful one with with some new things to say, but it doesn't mean that the other two are not worth reading as well. So the first one emphasized, if you like, what is the content we're trying to hand on? Let's make sure we've got that clear after Vatican II, because that had to be held firm, because a lot of people were confusing a change in handing on with a change in content. So first directory held it firm. The second, as you've indicated, really placed us, uh, placed catechesis 
into evangelization as a serious thing. And it placed as a centerpiece something called the pedagogy of God, which was when we do this, we are simply participating in God's own work of educating his people. It helps us to see the spiritual height of catechesis, you know, the, the dignity of what it is you're doing. Mm. Because only God can give faith. Ultimately, only God and through his church as a whole are people reconciled and given grace and the saving truth. So as catechists, we don't do that. As parents, we don't give our children faith. That is this incredibly um, mysterious, grace-filled encounter that they're having in their lives, which is with God himself in and through the whole of his creation. And obviously the parents are directing them to how that happens. And so really the second directory wanted us to focus upon that mystery very deeply. And you've, you've mentioned the link with evangelization. There's one element of it I think is really picked up here. Uh, and that's what's called the kerygma. Um, kerygma is just a Greek word uh, meaning herald. And um, you think back to St. Francis of Assisi, who when he was asked, who, am, who are you? He said, I'm the herald of the king. You know, he's he's the one who's proclaiming who the king is. That's his job in life. And so um, the other word, the other word that's interesting, because it's often called the first proclamation of the faith. It's the first thing people need to hear, but first in terms of primary, most fundamental, most essential as well. Um, the word used in church documents, and I was just checking whether this was the case with John Paul and so on. It, it is. Uh, it's basically the word annunciation. So um, that's really a good way to think about it. What's the first moment is the dawn of salvation, you know, in that fullness when Christ came was the angel made the annunciation to Our Lady. Mm. So he made he gave the basic message. He gave the basic proclamation to her, and of course we see there the the perfect response of faith. You've got the whole of catechesis almost summed up in that beautiful exchange. And what's nice there is because the the directory is very interested in the role of dialogue, is that it is the dialogue between the messenger of God and the person receiving faith, and that that model of the Annunciation is a strong one in the new directory. And really wanting to emphasize that in this new evangelization world, people need to hear that basic proclamation over and over again. It's very easy to have a fragmented view of the Christian faith. You just see a church, you kind of know there are priests, you've, you've seen them around. You Maybe you've attended Mass, but maybe you don't that often. So you, you're aware of some of the elements of the culture of the faith, but maybe you don't quite know what it's all about. And the, the kerygma is the proclamation about what it's all about, which is God himself. And the new directory here is just following the catechism. Number, number one, first paragraph of the catechism is the kerygma. And so you read catechesis in and through paragraph one the whole time. You, you come in through the kerygma. And the catechism is beautifully constructed because the kerygma is restated in every single teaching. It's one of the amazing things about how it does it. So it's kind of set up the new directory and says, this is how you can do it. The catechism's already done it, shown us how to do this. So that's the first thing, the kerygmatic understanding of the faith is really important. Yes, this this kerygmatic catechesis has an application in all sorts of areas within the actual directory itself. It talks about schools, it talks about catechists, it talks about interfaith relations, it all it talks about a number of different areas. Uh, so let's go through some of those. Well, what are the implications here? What are the, the new things to say for, for example, catechists? Oh, in other words, the directory for catechists as a whole. Um, yes, I mean, it does mean that an implication for catechists in regard to this is, would you be able to say what the um, what the essence of the faith is if you were just asked to say it in a single paragraph or a few sentences? So could you just say it um, and get very good at saying that? Because it does mean that a lot of catechetical interactions, um, really important ones, also take place outside of formal catechetics. 
but you almost need to have it as a word on your lips, which can can float off easily in conversations. And, you know, if somebody asks you to give an account for the hope that's in you, you just can say it. Um, St. Augustine, back in the early church in his work on catechesis, said, get used to saying it in a very short form and then think to yourself, imagine I had now one whole session in catechesis just to give the charisma. Let me just unpack it now, because basically it's almost like um, all the key things in the story of salvation God wants to share with us. You know, that God is perfect in himself. He's calling us to share in his own divine life. And he's not doing that because he has to, but because he wants to. And then he doesn't just desire that, but he acts to make that possible. And you see the whole of God's action and interaction and dialogue with people in the Old Testament. But it's all a preparation for that, that God himself wants to do this in person with us. And God himself is not going to just tell us what to do. He himself will do it. He himself appears among us to call us into his life. And that's obviously what we call the fullness, the fullness of time, the fullness of God's revelation, the unveiling of God himself. And the relationship is now clear. And that from then on, we just constantly go back to the Gospels in order to. So another big implication is just know the Gospels so well, because here is God himself revealing himself and bringing people into his life. And all we do is we participate into, in that divine work as catechists. Mm -hmm. So know the Gospels well. Wonderful. And how does this therefore apply to other extended forms of catechesis, such as, for example, in schools, where this is a, a privileged place, it's, as it says within the directory, for uh, Christian education? Yeah, schools is a really interesting one, because uh, what you're doing in the schools, um, we spoke earlier about the new evangelization, is knowing that that is the central doctrine, you're actually creating the worldview in the school. You've got the opportunity through the disciplines that are offered to try and make sure that they help help the children into that central gospel message. Mm. Um, I mean, what's interesting that uh, John Paul wrote something called Fides Eratio, Faith and Reason, about this. He talked about the, the prerequisites for the gospel, which you have to have. You have to believe the world has meaning. You have to believe that your life has a purpose. Mm. You have to believe that you can know what that purpose is. And you have to believe that it's worthwhile knowing. So he said they're, they're the basic requirements. And I think that those you can see in a science curriculum, an arts curriculum, what you're doing is basically building out the world has purpose, the world has meaning, the world is rational. It's been created in a, through, we say, the logos, the, the rationality of God. So it makes sense. We can explore things and we can know reality. And that's not only philosophy, but the whole of science is based upon that and our interactions with each other in personal knowing. And then also that it's worth knowing that there is depth, that it's not simply scientism. It's not simply that the truth is something which, as it were, is objective and disconnected from our own values. But those values themselves are, that is, the deepest reality of the universe. That God is the good, the true and the beautiful, all of that. And that is often delivered through the arts curriculum, through history, through what people fight for, through what people try to reform for. Every reform movement is based on the idea of that God is the good. It has to be. Or else it's just simply a mob rule. It's got to be that God is the good. That's uh, the only thing that gives sense and rationality to it. All of that really is the school. So the school is the educational environment within which the curriculum and catechesis take place. Mm. Wonderful. And of course, this has a lot of connections to apologetics. It has a lot of uh, connections to media presentations of the faith. All of this idea of the, this, the catechesis being rooted within the gospel itself and being able to explain the gospel itself in a very sort of simple, quick way. Uh, and sort of that, that has lots of applications. Yeah. Uh, do you find that in the way that you're now going to teach this at Steubenville and in your own ministry? Sure. Thank you, Peter. That's, that's a really interesting question again. Yes. Yeah, so um, Steubenville, I, I was very attracted to Steubenville because it always taught what's called a charismatic catechesis. So this has been a movement in catechesis as well, which has got a history. So the recovery, it's a bit like it's a kind of precursor to new evangelization. 
the mm. recovery of the need for a charismatic approach uh, was was launched back in the 1930s. Uh, and the the faculty at Steubenville are completely dedicated to charismatic catechesis and they've always formed people like that. Um, it means that you form people with a very lively sense as well of the role of the catechist. You've got to be completely invested. It's not the sort of nine to five job where you go and you give a talk and you come out. Mm. Uh, you're not to be, as it were, a stranger in your own parish or your own school. You're there in order to show and reveal in a kind of unity of life and proclamation, uh, the good news. So yeah, that's I, we love doing that. And I direct something called the Catechetical Institute, which basically is workshops. These are, this is interesting for me digitally because they're online workshops trying to follow this pedagogy, of get people offline, trying to use the workshop online to reach people, but give them real conversion tasks and real formation tasks in their their lives where they are so that that is something which yes the new directory is going to really help with as well to to really get that brilliant so final question that i think who in particular of the various different kinds of people who might be interested in and might benefit from uh, this new directory for catechesis who do you think the the main people who would benefit from this are and what do you think they should look for in this text to most benefit their own ministry their own lives their own use of catechesis uh, more broadly well wow, that's a, again that's a great question so we've talked about catechists and teachers so they would be too clear the the other thing to say is um, that the church doesn't think primarily in terms of professionals as it were mm. to some extent if you're a, a catechist a volunteer catechist, you are sort of somebody enlisted. I know that fathers tapped you on the shoulder and said, would you be available to do this? But you're kind of representing, um, you know, the parish and the priest and so on. But that already signals to us that you're kind of under an authority and the authority is the priest. So the first people to whom the directories are always um, written are bishops and priests and deacons. So it's always to ordain ministry first because they're, they're the ones entrusted with as the magisterium. They're the ones entrusted with the teaching uh, work of the church and they draw lay people into that. So that's very much for them. Uh, and the others who have a, a natural and supernatural role the church is always seen as the primary formators of the parents themselves and this is something as parents and i know that very much the temptation to do this the temptation is to always think somebody else probably knows how to do this better than i do mm -hmm. but this directory really speaks powerfully again to the conviction that it's parents who god has called to be the formators of their children and because it is to be a unity of witness in life and somebody who stays with the child, that what the church calls accompaniment, which basically means just staying with them. Who is it who actually has most time with the child? Well, it's the parents. You have the time. You're the natural accompanier of the child. You're the one who can actually speak the word of life in all the situations where, if it likes, not a formal setting. It's just sort of the child comes up with a question and that's that's the moment and so this directory is really helpful in thinking okay remember always to speak from the point of view of a christian worldview so you know it's going to be about god and mm -hmm. god and his grace and god can do all things you know give the child hope in who he is and faith and help to elicit love for him you know so think about some of those fundamentals so you don't always have to know everything in terms of all the details but learn how to always speak with uh, helping the child to trust into sense of, you know, God's in control um, and we can we can trust him. We we can learn to love him even in through this difficult situation. Those sorts of ways. Parents are the best place to do all of that. And of course, really, because it's the word of life, parents are called to take seriously their own formation and learning more. Because the more you can be secure in that faith, which is, you know, yourself, the better you're handed on. Fantastic. Is there anything else that you think is worth noting about this directory that uh, should be brought to people's attention? 
Well, I mean, it's there's so much in it. And I, to be honest with you, I'm still on my initial read throughs. So, um, but I know CTS is going to be doing a lot of work promoting it. So praise God for that. Amen. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Petrov Willy, for your time today going through this exciting new development of the Directory for Catechesis. Those of you who want to know more uh, from the CTS about this can go to www.ctsbooks.org and you can order the directory right there, along with other titles to do with catechesis. Of course, there is the Compendium of the Catechism of the Catholic Church, the Catechism of the Catholic Church itself, uh, Morris Laetitia. Evangelii Gaudium, and other titles that have to do with the catechetical works of the Church and the teachings of the faith. Thank you very much, Dr. Petrov. God bless. And I hope those listening will visit the website and really find these titles really interesting, and particularly this new directory. Thank you. Thank you.